Hello everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Destiny video. Today I just want to sit down with you and talk about my um, favorite characters from Legacies, or the characters I'm looking forward to playing with the most. Um, I've narrowed this down to, I'm going to be doing uh, six characters, um, three from each side and one from each color. So I've kind of narrowed down the cards I want the most per side and per color. So we're going to go ahead and first take a look at the villain cards. So villain blue first. A uh, card I'm looking forward to the most for Blue Villain, or character I'm looking forward to the most, is Palpatine Darth Sidious. It was between him and Maul, and I felt I feel like Palpatine could be a little bit more interesting, especially with um, his power action, and he has three damage sides, and um, none of them have a resource cost, so he has a two range, two melee, two indirect. He also has a two resource sides. So um, I think over Darth Maul, he's got the one extra damage side, um, it's not resource costed. Maul has the cool ability that if they play something like he doesn't like you on Maul and remove a Maul die, then you have to remove a die as well. That's really interesting. However, um, after the rules reference came out, it stated, or clarified anyway, that specials on dice that remove dice don't count towards that ability. I think we all knew that, but Fantasy Flight went ahead and clarified it. So if you use the Chopper special on uh, Maul die, that um, his, Maul's ability won't let him remove an opponent's die as well. But if you play, he doesn't like you, flank, or anything like that, or pin down. Anything that removes, any card that removes a die can um, trigger Maul's ability. But anyway, going back to Palpatine. So, um, 12 health, 1620. Fairly expensive to get him out um, at Elite. But you can pair him with like a 10 point, like a Death Trooper or something. And you're not really mixing damage all that much because he has a range damage as well. But um, the really cool thing I think that I'm looking forward to the most, again, is this power action where you can play an event from your hand, decreasing its cost by the number of different dam damage symbols, symbols showing. So you have um, range, melee, and indirect. So even if you have, let's say you have a swiftness, and we have them now. Let's say you have two resources in your hand. You roll out Palpatine, and he rolls, let's say, just one damage type. Let's say he rolls um, two melee damage. You can play something like swiftness for free with his power action, which has Ambush and gives another card Ambush. So Swiftness goes out for free due to his power action. Then you then pay two to play something like we have them now. Um, focus your dice to damage and then resolve it because um, Swiftness gave that card Ambush. So I think this power action could just be really fun with Palpatine. I like that he's got half of his dice are damage and you have damage of every type. So you have the range, melee, and indirect. Again, two resource sides. 12 health, so he's got uh, quite a bit of health. Not as much as the older Palpatine, as much much like they did with Darth Vader with Spirit of Rebellion when they made it um, Dark Apprentice. They lowered his point cost, lowered his health, and changed up um, his dice entirely. So this new Palpatine is what I'm looking forward to the most with blue villain characters. We're going to move in to red villain next. And the red villain I'm looking forward to playing with the most is Tarkin. So 11 health, 13, 16, um, really good size. So you have a two indirect, a focus, a double double focus, double discard, resource, and blank. And this power action, which is just crazy. So remove two of your dice, showing the same symbol, to deal four indirect damage to an opponent. So you can remove blanks. Remove two blanks, deal four indirect damage. Um, I'm working on building a couple decks with him, where he, I'm pairing him with a, him at Elite with Elite Seven Sister. You do that focus into her um, damage and resolve a ton of damage with her and her, her Seeker droids. Also, um, Kylo Ren Tormented one is a good pairing. Um, again, that's elite Kylo single Tarkin. But um, being able to focus your your dice into whatever you want with his two focus sides is really, really cool. He has indirect damage. The power action on him is really cool as well. So what I'm thinking of doing when I build this Tarkin deck is... Tarkin with Fragmentation Grenades. So Fragmentation Grenades, um, five damage sides, all indirect. Um, when you resolve it, you have to pay a resource to keep it in play. So let's say you resolve two indirect damage, you pay a resource, that grenade doesn't get discarded. You can pair that with something like Ammo Belt. So when you do resolve it, the Ammo Belt gets discarded. But at that point, you are also spending a resource to get the Ammo Belt out as well. So my strategy is roll in Tarkin with, the, with two Frag Grenades on him. Let's say they both land on one indirect damage each, so a total of two indirect damage. You power action, and you basically double the amount of damage that those grenades did. 
or you focus into the higher damage sides, resolve them, and then pay the resources to keep them out. That's a really interesting ability as well, especially if you pair him in a blue deck. You have access to stuff like manipulate, so you manipulate your own dice into blanks, and your opponent's dice are you change one of their dice to a blank as well. So you blank out like two of your own dice, and then it uses power action to deal um, four damage. So that's Tarkin. He's definitely the card I'm looking forward to. The character I'm looking forward to the most in Red Villain, and maybe even the entire set. So um, that's Tarkin. We're going to move into our yellow character next. And the yellow villain I'm looking forward to playing with the most is Dr. Afra Artifact Hunter. So 10 health, 11, 14, uh, 2 range damage for a resource, 2 indirect damage, discard, 2 shield, resource, and blank. And the cost of the first droid you play each round is decreased by 1, and after you deal indirect damage to yourself, you may draw a card. That ability is why I find her to be the most interesting yellow villain in this set. So... She's got the double shield side, so you can shield herself from this indirect damage that she's going to be dealing to herself to get um, extra card draw. So, you have cards in the set that are designed to deal indirect damage to yourself to achieve a certain um, certain effect. So basically, you put that damage on Afra, and you get to draw cards. That could lead to lead to really good card advantage. You might even pair that with a battlefield like Maz's Castle, where you start getting getting to look through your deck for like other stuff. Um, we have a couple droids you can throw in there as well. So we have the Astromech from Spirit Rebellion, uh, BT-1, which is her own droid. So when that droid activates, it actually does an indirect damage to you, and it does an indirect damage to an opponent. So if, if Afra is shielded, you can, you know, um, have BT-1's damage hit her. You get to draw a card. Um, I'm not thrilled with her damage sides, really. So she has two, one of them being resource costed. But then if you play this in a, in a deck that has enough resource generation, you probably don't have to really worry about that two, re, two damage for a resource. Maybe like pair her, um, maybe even at non-elite with other characters that just have a lot of resources. Or you also play Archangel, which is her ship. When you activate that ship, you get to activate two other supports. So you can activate other ships, other droids. Um, she might even pair well with uh, Cedar um from... Empire at War, where you can uh, basically reactivate um, like vehicles and things like that. So maybe she, maybe Afra slots into like a vehicle deck, and to get to those vehicles, maybe you deal indirect damage to her, so you draw those vehicles and then just uh, play them. So Afra's ability, especially her indirect damage ability to take damage to draw cards, is why she is my um, the most character I'm most interested in villain yellow. We're now gonna go ahead and jump over to the hero cards. We'll be right back with that. And the character I'm looking forward to playing with the most in blue hero is Yoda, Wizened Master. 10 health, 10 or 13 points, depending on how you want to run him. Um, double focus, disrupt, discard, shield, two specials, no blanks on this guy. Um, special, choose and do two of the following. Gain a resource, give a character a shield, turn one of your dice to any side, or discard the top card of a deck. Yoda seems really, really strong. Um, I proxied him with uh, Qui-Gon, and it was just a, an insane uh, shield deck. So you use his special to gain shields, you focus something else into a special, so then you can um, chain resolve those specials. Like you do Yoda special, give Qui-Gon a, a shield, focus your force speed into a special, resolve that, do two more actions, and so on. He's also got that two focus side. And he's got a lot of really good utility cards, like our sides, so he can get rid of resources, he can get rid of cards, he can give a give a character a shield. So you can put a shield on Qui-Gon and have him um, ping that ability off. And then double specials, and the specials each do um, two of the following choices, which is really cool. So um, Yoda is definitely probably like, the, the between him and Tarkin, Yoda and Tarkin are the cards I'm looking forward to getting the most out of the entire set. Um, hopefully at Elite... But um, I could see um, either of these sliding into a deck with just uh, a single of each. And also Yoda's cost is super low. So for the 13 points, you have 17 left to spend on another character. Um, that is huge, I think, with Yoda. So Yoda, Wise Master, car I'm looking forward to the most, or character I'm looking forward to the most in Hero Blue. We're going to move into our Red Hero next. And the Red Hero I'm looking forward to playing with the most is Finn, Soldier of Necessity, 11 health. 12 or 16 points, depending on how you want to run him. 4 damage side, so we have a 
two range, a plus two range, three indirect, and then his special also could is a damage side as well, but also has a resource side. So he's got the two range side, the indirect side, and his special, which is move one damage from a card to another card in play. This ignores shield. So you can move stuff off of um like drop zone, you can move stuff off of backup muscle. You can looks like you could it just says a card. So it doesn't say it's a card that you actually control. So you can move damage off of an opponent's backup muscle, for example. So let's say if they have two damage on a backup muscle and your character is like has two health left, you can use Finn Special to move that damage onto one of their characters, making it so they can't kill that character with backup muscle. Um, you can move stuff off of Resistance Bomber. Um, you can move, remove move damage off of like things like Drop Zone, anything that basically stores damage on it. St um, also, uh, Con Artist, because you put damage on Con Artist when you use the special. So if your opponent is trying to just mill a ton of Con Artist, you can pull damage off of that, off of their Con Artist and hit them with it, or even off of your own Con Artist and hit them with that as well. So he's definitely got, um, there's definitely a lot of cards that can play around with his special. You know, think anything that basically puts damage on it, he can um, manipulate with his special, which is really cool. And then on top of that, he's got those three other damage sides, and he does. Um, I think his indirect damage side is really strong. He's got good health. Um, I think he's he's costed appropriately. Pair him with like a fourteen another fourteen point character. You can pair him with somebody like Hera, and um, get access to a ton of vehicles. Like I said, the Resistance Bomber, basically keep out longer with Finn because you can move that damage off of it to um, damage your opponents, or you can also just wait until the end of the round. If you play it with Hera Special, just return it to your hand and then refresh it for the next round because the damage will fall off as soon as it goes back to your hand. So I think Finn's Soldier of Necessity is definitely right here I'm looking forward to playing with the most, and I think his special just has a lot of uh, cool things it could probably do. So that's Finn. We're going to move into our um, Yellow Hero next. And finally, the yellow hero I am looking forward to playing with the most is Zeb Aurelios, the last Lasat. 12 health, 13 or 17 points, 1 melee damage, 2 melee damage, 3 melee damage for a resource, shield, resource, and blank. And you may resolve the melee damage sides on this die as if it were ranged damage. So that's really cool. This allows him to slot into um, decks and you can kind of split damage and not really have to worry about at least his dice because his dice, let's say I roll um, a one melee and a two melee and I roll another character in, let's say I roll a one range and a two range, I could treat all of that as range damage essentially. So you basically you can resolve all that at once because it lets you use the melee sides on his dice as if it were ranged, which is really cool. Um, that's kind of the reason I chose him Slightly over Saw Gerrera. Saw Gerrera's got really good um, indirect damage and a pretty cool special where you discard a card and deal indirect damage equal to the value on the card. However, um, on top of that, you do get the result to discard the card. So, like, I think a lot of people are going to be running low-cost events, so, like, zero or one, maybe even two. So, if you discard a zero-cost event, it's not going to do any damage. Um, you still do discard the card, though. But that's one reason I ended up going with Zeb over... Um, over Saw Gerrera was the ability to resolve his character dice as range damage. So again, you can pair him with a range character and not really have to worry about splitting damage or resolving it separately or things like that. Now, any upgrades on him, you're not going to be able to resolve those as um, as range damage. So if you put like a um, like a vibro knife on him, for example, that vibro knife will still have to resolve as melee damage. You won't be able to turn that into range damage. That only works with his character dice, but that is still a very cool effect. And that is the last card. Um, I don't really have any gray card characters I'm looking forward to. Um, I think, you know, there's the Jawa and the starter set. I think that might be about it. I know there's some neutral characters as well, which I didn't include, like Hondo. Hondo looks really, really fun. Um, I did a video on when he was spoiled in the yellow article, so you can go ahead and um, check that one out. Um, that's going to do it for this video. Remember to... Um, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and also the deck box giveaway and Packs of Destiny giveaway is still going on. There'll be a link in the description to where you can check that out. Again, I want to thank everybody for watching, and have a good night. Take care.